In 2011, it was declared that Afghanistan was one of the most dangerous places in the world to be a woman. But that wasn't always the case. In the 1960s and early 70s, Afghanistan was often viewed as more progressive than neighboring countries when it came to women's rights. Back then, women were able to pursue an education, get a job, and even vote. But when Islamic fundamentalist group the Taliban seized control of the country in the mid-90s, everything changed. Why are women treated the way they are? A lot of it is the culture, culture that's existed for so many years. That was Paula Bronstein, a photojournalist who has spent the last 15 years documenting life in Afghanistan with a particular focus on women, a group that is once again finding its voice as it strives to distance itself from the Taliban's ideology. This is a very conservative culture in terms of Islam and the thoughts and the feelings about what kind of presence a woman has in society. When the Taliban took over in 1996, a strict version of Islamic Sharia law was imposed across Afghanistan, with a number of laws specifically aimed at stripping away the fundamental human rights of women and girls. Bans were imposed on women. They couldn't even leave the house without a male chaperone and were required to wear a burqa so as not to show any bare skin. Disobeying these laws often meant brutal punishment, and the fear of reciprocation is still so great that some women have continued to abide by these laws even though the Taliban was ousted from power back in 2001. They're so programmed to not being seen, hiding behind the burqa, and then somehow feeling like even my camera can x-ray them. This was a challenge for Paula. However, over time, she eventually started to gain their confidence. In Afghanistan, you sit down and have tea. That's how you discuss everything. That's how you get to know people. It's the culture. Me being a female photojournalist means I can get a certain kind of access that perhaps male photojournalists cannot. Paula's unique access allowed her to document a side of Afghan life that is rarely seen by the West. There were so many women's issues to document. And, and, and stories to be told. Poverty, forced marriages, many of them being child brides, the abuse that goes on within the household that nobody sees, physical abuse, mental abuse, domestic violence in general. No one felt it was important to have an educated woman. So quite a few of them are illiterate. Low levels of literacy and old social stigmas that surround the idea of working women meant that the majority of Afghan families rely almost exclusively on a man's income. However, the number of wars over the last three decades has meant that many women have been left widowed and without a household income. What happens to women who, who don't have a male who d dictates their life? All of a sudden there's an uneducated woman who has to try to feed her, her kids. How's she doing it? Women's issue is, here's the legacy of the war. The, the country has got so many, you know, permanent scars. During her time in Afghanistan, Paula did document some cultural shifts in favor of women's rights. In 2014, she took these photos of young women rallying for Ashraf Ghani during the presidential elections. I really love the fact that women had the, you know, they were, they were in huge numbers without burqas, uh, waving flags, and it was just, there was, it was just kind of a joyous occasion. I, I loved the energy of the women that were, they, they had come out to vote, they were, they were at rallies, you know, they were just really involved. I felt like that's a positive, kind of a positive sign. And there are other signs that things might be changing albeit slowly. There are still many obstacles. The Taliban continues to be a strong presence here, and long-standing social stigmas about women's rights are still a problem. For Paula, it's hard to gauge how long it will take for Afghan women to truly stand on equal footing with men. But she does believe that the spirit to make that change does exist among the women she has met. They really do show amazing amounts of uh, stamina and just you know, pure passion to, to do what they want to do in life. 
The Taliban still has strongholds in parts of Afghanistan. To find out what it's really like for American soldiers deployed to these regions, take a look at Discovery's new series, Taking Fire, premiering September 13th at 10.9 Central.